You know, when we introduced the iPhone in January, we said it was the best iPod ever. And iPhone owners agree with us. And people have been asking us and wondering, when are we going to bring this technology to an iPod? Well, the answer to that question is we're going to do it today, and this is what the product looks like. The first generation of iPod Touch, also known as the iPhone without a phone, brought the world of iPhone OS to millions of users. At the time, this device seemed impossibly thin, and to this very day is still one of my favorite Apple products of all time. Hello everybody, Apple Demo here, and today we're going to be looking at two prototype iPod Touch first generations. In most cases, prototypes are vastly different from each other due to the nature of them being from various stages and just generally only one makes it out alive. But in this case, two iPod Touches that are nearly identical somehow managed to survive. As currently being shown on screen, both of these iPod Touches will boot up to the Burnin app, which essentially is just an automation app that runs diagnostics and tests various hardware functionalities of the iPod Touches. However, as the batteries in both of these iPod Touches are unfortunately dead, it will always fail. These iPod Touches have many hardware differences from production models. First and foremost is the lack of any engravings on the back of the iPods. There's also an abundance of factory stickers on them. However, the software is where these iPods really shine. Both of these iPod models run non-UI, also known as Switchboard, but this Switchboard version is based on iPhone OS 1. Just the fact that a device like this can still exist honestly blows my mind, let alone that there's two of them. And of course with having a developmental operating system, the iBoot version of this iPod is also developmental. Here's the boot sequence of this iPod when plugged into a serial connection. Unfortunately because the battery is dead in this iPod, you'll see that it does a little funny glitch. Yeah, I don't think it's supposed to do that. Another fun software tool that this iPod has installed because it has developmental iBoot is a little software utility called Diagnostics, also known as Diags. Diags is essentially a, you could say a pseudo OS where it's very, very, very compact and it does really only hardware testing. For both of these particular iPod prototypes, the only way to interact with Diags is through a serial interface. A little known fact about Diags is that it actually comes pre-installed on almost every single iPod model except for all of the touches. And if a prototype has Switchboard installed, it's almost guaranteed that it also has Diags installed. Both of these iPods have a admittedly ugly plastic wrap that's covering the screen of them, but I unfortunately, you could say, like to keep prototypes exactly as they are, so I won't be removing it. But essentially, this plastic on the front is essentially just to protect the iPod while it's going through all the factory tests. Going back to the default boot configuration of these iPods, they both will automatically run an automated testing app called Burnin. One particular test, I think, looks really cool, but I do have to warn about an epilepsy warning. I believe the reason for this test is that there would be an engineer watching the screen checking for any screen defects or dead pixels. This next test I think is by far the best looking but it runs for an incredibly long time. And then the screen starts having a seizure. And then finally, the automated testing app detects that the battery does not work and fails. With how long I had the iPod running the tests, I was pretty disappointed. 
but I actually have no plans on replacing the batteries in these iPods. The reason being is that, first of all, to even open these iPods, it's so hard and you were likely to cause a lot of damage to it. And even if I did replace the battery, it's probably just going to die again in 10 years. And because both of these iPods still have the manufacturing plastic on the front and back, they're in absolutely mint condition and I don't want to cause any damage to them. And besides, they're absolute pieces of history and I want to preserve them, not destroy them. And now for the grand finale, I'm going to play back some no commentary footage that I still have of these amazing prototypes. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, please leave a like and maybe even consider subscribing as it really helps motivate me to create more content like this. I really do hope that you enjoyed taking a look at these pieces of history. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.